Hello builders, uh, welcome to another ESO Homes. Today we are at Stillwater Lake, or Stillwater House, wherever the hell it is. Stillwater Retreat, there you go. Um, this came out with the Greymoor chapter. It's a small Dwemer building stood on the edge of a frozen lake. However, I like playing around with things. So, I decided to do a solitude village upstairs with a harrow storm in the middle of it. And so because this couldn't be dwarven, I turned it into the Hall of the Dead. Uh, so what we'll do, as usual, we'll do the tour. Then I'll pull the place apart, try and give you some ideas. And, um, with Harrow Storms, could have done it better, um, but again, it's the item slot count. So my advice for you, just stand here a sec, would be, if you're going to do it in a seven or 600 item house, make the area much smaller, and that way you can really concentrate. Uh, the main issue was lighting, and we'll talk to that when we get outside. So let's start with the Hall of the Dead. Now, anyone who's seen my stuff knows I don't know how to do editing, I can't add non-copyrighted music, I can't change jack. So we're just going to get the basic tour. Uh, this place was fun. Didn't really need to have the dragon skeleton in the roof, but I didn't have anywhere to put it. So I just shoved it in. That was supposed to be close, but yeah, never mind. The only thing you can't change there is the door because of the hitbox. If you put, it won't let you put anything from the door and you don't want to be messing around with not being able to open it. So obviously above every crypt you have the church. So, working on the assumption that there was a couple of survivors from the Harrow Storm. You see a few people walking around. Most of them are soldier driven. Now the stained glass isn't working. Okay, during the daytime, you get stained glass on the floor, the light, but these walls are too thick, so you can't have the glass windows on the front and the back. So if you want it to be accurate, you're going to need to farm, I've got two windows outside, so you need four in total. And if you're going to use the front of Aurel, uh, maybe do a Alanor build, so the walls match to the chapel. Remember that wherever you put it, people are going to be able to see out the windows. So you're going to want to make sure that there's something for them to look at. Doesn't have to be a lot of items. 
and that they can't see anything they shouldn't. So that wall is blocking off a lot of mess. Are we outside? I had a lot of fun building the graveyard. Um, global achievements. The achievement furnishes have gravestones. The Outlaws Refuge has some gravestones. And the Assassins DLC, there's also a furniture merchant in Kvach that sells gravestones. Other than that, you've got Lux Vendor. Um, buildable elsewhere, scrying in antiquities, uh, Alan or buildables. So you can you can have a, a good mix. Oh, and then the Halloween event dropped a couple as well. Plus, what's on the Crown Store? So you can really mix and match the rather than having just the same stone over and over. That's what I was saying about the windows. Uh, I would have liked to have had two more. Um, threw it down for Halloween. It's not really a Halloween house, it's just a Harrow Storm. But uh, I didn't have time to do the uh, scribe inside two windows and farm it. Uh, main reason was there was the witches event and I was judging two housing competitions. So it was keeping me busy with all the promoting in the guild chat. But uh, because I wasn't entering as a judge, I wanted to have something that the people could look around. Oh, okay, so this is the issue I was telling you about with lighting. There has to be a lot of red lights to get Harrowstorm to work. Um, the Daedra ones I know that there's a Daedra light which is really bright and I can't remember which of the chandeliers it is, whether it's a DLC one, um, sorry, whether it's a craftable or whether it was a, a pack one, but there's one that's really red. Uh, I had to go with shoving ten of these around, those red lights, but they're, they're not strong enough. That's one of my uh, witch's totems. But yeah, so you need the mist and you need a lot of red. The other thing is, as usual, I run out of items. So my marketplace is pretty empty. Uh, what if I had done a if I hadn't had to build a Hall of the Dead, so I'd put this in Moon Sugar Meadow, would not have been an issue. I would have had 200 more items. Oh, someone's hungry. So, there's always three witches' totems. Here's the second. And the third is just past the second house. Just want to scroll out. Now, the houses are fun to build. I mean, you can do a lot with the solitude pieces. Should have had window sills. Uh, my other videos detail that. Uh, but the roof was fun to put on and getting the angles to connect. <laughs> Someone else has been here. 
could have actually done it as a hollow house and had that as actually usable, but then you have to decorate inside. And then the second house I did was uh, this one. Uh, again, when you're building a fake house, if it's outside the things are going to stick through, your house size has to match the footprint of the floor pieces. Uh, again, red lights stuck everywhere. Uh, one of my friends pointed out that this actually looks like a uh, where the um, <coughs> ladies earn extra money at nighttime area of any major city. Now there's an issue with these two and this issue is they walk at different speeds so I put this path out where he came around town she followed and then basically he leaves her in the dust he just abandons her he's like 40 seconds ahead um, I've tried putting in some pauses and I just can't get the pathways to ma pathways to match up so if you've got four of these house guests, start them all off at the same time. And if you're going to do someone walking together, make sure you pick two which have got roughly the right speed. Uh, and then you can just put a pause in if you wanted to. Uh, they're supposed to start in the church, come through, go down the side, come over to here, and then go back to the church. And the witch. We're supposed to run around the edges. And then kind of follow them. Only that didn't work. Uh, trying to get that to work would be like slamming your hand in the car door for fun. So if you're going to do that, good luck. I will work on passing another time. A couple of fun effects you can do. If you want a working treasure chest, well not working, but if you want a treasure chest that has the new uh, antiquity perk where the chest glows, this is what they look like in dungeons if you get it. If you don't have Greymore, this is a lifesaver in dungeons. No more looking for chests. And it's really easy. You just have decorative chest from the global uh, achievement. Costs 10k once you've unlocked it. And then... I don't know if I'm going to pull it out. The antiquity that you can dig up. I guess it's in lighting. There you go. So all you've got to do is stick that in the ground and then stick, not the wall, there and once that's in the ground that actually works fine there's another one you can do which is even easier once you've completed the storyline I think in Glenumbra maybe there's a skull with a blue line of light coming up very small very focused bright blue line if you put that inside the table 
and then you put the thieves trove on top of the table it looks exactly like the ones that you steal out in the countryside so if you're going to do a thieves house if you've got a thieves guild if you want to do somewhere where it hasn't been broken into yet that's a nice little touch to put and then just the last of the tour uh, I wanted the witch to actually have somewhere to stay you know I mean she's coming from somewhere before she sucked everyone's souls out so in the cave I just dropped down a, a super basic in fact it's a POS uh, witch's house everyone's probably got seven or eight of these I've given so many away during this event Wishes have been my idea. It's not the magic mirror. Uh, I saw it on YouTube about two years ago. I uh, never actually had a chance to use it for anything. If it was built into a wall with just a thin gap above and below so you can slot it in, you could actually have it probably flush. I've seen a few versions of this, but it, it looks pretty cool. And then Lastly, just a small altar. Uh, if you get this from Craglawn, um, I can't remember where I got it, one of the trials maybe, it glows and you just put any kind of table or altar over the top and you get a visualizing effect and that looks awesome. Uh, if you're doing a magic user's house, do the same thing. Okay, if you don't have this piece here and you don't know what it looks like, it's that. You can even set it just into the floor. Hmm, hard to do. I would be tempted to put a wall from that post to this post and then across. So you've got like two walls that so you kind of cut out the, the you hide the snake. I'm not sure if that would work and then maybe build that into a doorway. Or just put a wall straight over the top of the snake. Uh, I don't think it goes to the bottom. No, you've got a small smoke effect. If it didn't have those stupid snakes on it, I would have tried building a transporter room from Star Trek. A column of blue light, that underneath, six circles on the floor, up on the platform, and um, clockwork to make the, uh, the room. But the snakes kill it. So that's it. Uh, gonna start pulling things apart just to show you quickly how to do some of the stuff. So we're gonna need some light. Oh, that was just to uh, fill up a space. Luxury vendor, um, dwarven pipe that I made, and then luxury item. So, moving, well not moving on, technically moving back. If you can't fill up a tent area, this looks crap, but could have used a piece of wood, block it off. I could have even got some other kind of blue tent and just put it down on the front or a carpet just to block it. Okay, uh, houses. Here's Nizma being eaten by a... Doesn't look quite so good in the daytime. You can see the plant moving around.
but that is basically Daedric Fountain shoved into the ground. There you go, look, no Starker, you can, it kind of hides it, it's just like she's been eaten. So, Nismot on the floor. Um, mushroom Emerging Stinkhorn. Don't know where I got that from. Could have been a Lux vendor for the Vardenfell. And then the other thing is the Nerncrux rock. And that's how you make someone get eaten by a vampire. Badly. Uh, if anyone comes up with a better one, again, link it. Love to see it. So the buildings. Basically you just do a normal house on the front and then you just add these little triangle parts on the front and then you end up with the multiple angle roofs that you see a lot of in Solitudes and Greymoor. So that came out pretty well, I was happy with that. Um, if you want to hide that, put a chimney on it. Um, here, I wanted to try and do a walkway. I could have done it not quite so sloped. I mean, some people are going to be hitting their heads, maybe the Nords, the Orcs. And again, now in theory, if I'd built this house on a flat piece of land and hadn't sank the upper floor in, you could actually do this as a working house. Uh, the upstairs would have to be a little bit bigger because there's no gap in the middle. Uh, and that's because I had to leave space for the stairs. If you have the stairs coming up here, instead of there looks untidy from the inside uh, you'd have to put a flat roof on the inside here or a wooden platform make sure it doesn't poke through the walls outside and again, that will give you a working house. God, this one I've got no idea on. I've never been inside these. Oh, let's find out. So, if you build this from the outside, There's not really any way to get around this. Um, you could do a one story and just put on a flat roof. Uh, again, move these side walls up to make the roof higher. Hmm. I don't think maybe that one would work. It's too complex on the inside. Uh, last one. This works fine. I mean, it works on the outside. On the inside, this wall and this wall put a second one on the inside. So that it looks good from the inside and outside. Yeah, it means you're going to be using 
five solitude walls to make one end wall, but that's going to hide a lot of shit up. Same here. It'll be harder with the door. But there's ways around it. I mean, there's plenty of from scratch homes. Uh, what else? Oh, if you build on this lake, top tip, it looks like a lake because there's ice. And you'd be thinking, no one is going to build a house on top of this. The second it melts, your house will just fall in. Probably taking you with it. Hmm, you can't see the house most of the time. So, what you do is, very carefully, it doesn't have to be matched up completely because no one can really see them. You get some flooring and you, um, if it's courtyard, go for the elsewhere. Uh, the Alanor looks stupid under the ice. Well, I think it does. Um, and then just drop it under the floor so that when they're running around here I'm pretty sure you guys didn't see it but or even know there's anything under the floor but it just provides a bit of a edge of platform so it makes it look like solid ground uh, and when you get to the lake just shove a wall in You want to hide the gap. Let's pull that in a bit. There you go. And then now you've got the lake. Uh, if you want, you could throw a dock here just to make it obvious that there's land and then water. Uh, next tip uh, lighting. It's impossible that it's just not enough red. If you want to make it look as lit up in red as you can, I picked this area because I knew that the snow would reflect a lot more of the red. So here, or in the snow globe house, would be a very Actually, the snow globe house would probably work well for Harrow Storm. If you can get some of the red crystals, which are really bright, and do a lot of red light, that would have been better than trying to use these master ones because uh, they're not very bright, they're just mood lighting. So, uh, cemetery next. Now because it's church, this place I did use the Eleanor. And you have to watch it lines up a little bit better. Like there's a gap there. So that's what I used to have to be worked with, that ice. Um, but for a graveyard and a church, that's all right. Um, always use ivy on big walls. If you don't, they look too fake. You can see the wall sticking out a bit there, but angles. Uh, oh, and this is uh, another house. Couldn't really see it from that side, but I wanted to have something built up here. So like a lot of solitude homes, I just put these arches in. And it means that that way I've got a flat area to start building. I could have done it lower. I wanted to have like a storage area. What else? Okay, um, if you're going for atmosphere with a graveyard, um, if you've got it, the mist and fog from the crown store looks really good. So make sure that they don't place them straight too low on the floor, place them up fairly high. You want to make sure that as someone's walking through, it's going to be at eye level. If it's too low, you'd have to have the camera down here before you even see it. Uh, and if you want it a 
place to look really creepy. You want everything to feel enclosed. So, let's see. Let's do that. I've got no idea if this is going to work. So here you go, a couple more trees. Have them leaning over the path. And trees you can get everywhere. A bit too much. Come on. Oh, grow. If there's too much root, just sink them in the ground a bit. So really what you want to do is you want to feel like you're in an enclosed space. You don't want it open. I mean, that tree's all leaning too much and it should have been a big tree. Uh, let's skip through these pretty quick um, show you the church next there is actually a working upstairs uh, couldn't decorate so I had to say that they tried to blockade it during the hero storm just did not have enough items didn't really show you the stairs but there you go doesn't look too hideous a little bit of lighting, a little bit of something to draw your eye to, just to make it look like um, it's not abandoned. It was supposed to be a office slash study here. Uh, a working balcony. And then Fond of Aurel. I would have needed to put a stone in to block off the bottom or have this platform higher to line up. But you can actually turn this into a working room. Um, reason I've shoved. Okay, there's a, basically there's a gap. So I put in this um, it's the back of a Merkmeyer gallery item for completing the zone. But yeah, I was going to turn this into like the monk's bedroom with like four bunk beds and then a um, small bookshelf or a couple of chests of drawers at the end. But yeah, run out of space. It's also something about the way it's been built. It's a bit glitchy at this point. Uh, and then lastly, because this is a big area and I had to enclose it and make it smaller, zoom out. So the back of the town is just two of these giant blocks. If you can't fix something, just hide it. Cover trees behind it just to make it look mm, a bit more natural. And then another block here. Because we're saying that people have to look through the windows of the Font of Aurel. here this is the back of the church now and it is ugly you do not want anyone to get around the back of this area um, obviously yours will be laid out slightly differently but if you do a large build 
you're lost and find that there's one place like this that just looks horrific. That's the back of the stairs. Um, this is going along the balcony. And then where well, the balcony floor is only two bricks wide, it has to have the rest sticking out. So just remember, you can put a wall there, um, windows, hedge along the front, something just to make it look a bit more natural, give them something to look at. I didn't look up in that room on purpose. And then here. You can see it a bit better in the daytime, but there's just nothing. So that's it. If you want to build a Harrow Storm, you will need a lot of lights and a lot of the fog. Uh, assuming that you don't have three of these Nimbus crowd, uh, clouds, I had to buy a whole bunch of um, crown crates just so I could get two more of these. I had one already. There you go, and that's it. Uh, I hope that gave you some ideas. Just remember that with this place, it's a lighting and size, which are the issue. So you're gonna need to have, um... oh, one last thing to show you, I'm not sure if it works. Because there's ice, I don't know how it handles. I've already got no idea on this. What happens if you put a red light into it. Uh, now lights reflect. Mm. It's not very red, not in the snow. So any red lights you're going to want to try and hide. Don't hide it there. Um, oh, like for instance, back of this tree, I shoved one. Um, I was to put it under these eaves, wedged into a pillar. Inside the witch's totem. Uh, what else? Oh, okay, one more area. The undercroft. Let's just leg it back through here. I'll try building the house from scratch pretty soon. But I'll try to make it a luxury, not a solitude POS. That will be blowing reality we're just going straight for the lighting now when your lights are on you can't see the cobwebs so if you're doing a spooky house lighting is absolutely crucial you want to have enough lighting that it's not pitch black but they can't see details I mean she looks Dumb up close. In fact, I don't think her head was there. I think I've moved. she was. Yeah, I had the details. So, if you notice here, there's only two bits of lighting in this entire room. Alright, stop spinning. You got this, just gives them enough light to see. A to B picks out this detail, otherwise it'd be invisible. And then there's just two candles here. And what that does is 
where this is where the decorations are you want to make sure that this is where their eyes are drawn so when you come in beat it you come in you've got the little light so it's, it's bright enough to see around but it's not just not too bright I love that pet Okay, last one. I was saying that this is a dwarven house. I had to play around with this space so much. Uh, this wasn't as hard as when I built Blackreach, but it was bloody hard enough. So this is what the house looks like normally and this just doesn't work under a dwarven village so uh, if you're doing an undercroft you want to have low ceilings narrow corridors if possible unless you're doing like a giant tomb only fair enough but for an undercroft you want to have small spaces uh, you want it to feel claustrophobic and oppressive. Oh, and let me just do all that candle a second. If you want it to have a little bit more light, all the dragger tombs have got these kind of ledges, and there's like double ledges. The other and they've got arches above them so I did the best I could uh, with the time I had what you're gonna want to do is have just one candle you will have one candle there and then maybe one candle on the side. Oh, also, let's get rid of those because they're from the crown crate. If you don't have the shadow tendrils down, then yeah, you can see the place a lot better. So again, if you do that, then you need even less light. What I found was because I had limited items to build this, um, it was good to hide the mistakes, uh, not, not mistakes, but hide the mess. With these tendrils, I wanted it deliberately to look gloomy, because like this is way too bright. And lighting, height and layout is everything. So that's it. I hope that's given you some ideas. Uh, love to see them. No, no one's ever linked a video for me on my comment section before. I really would love it if you guys did. Especially if you took something that I've done and you improved on it. Because, hey, I could do some help too. And that's it. So until next time, happy building.